Hi, my name is Emily and I'd like to welcome you to Painting the Modern Way. Today, we're going to learn about the birth of modernism and we're going to make a copy of an old master painting from that era. Copying is a very important first step in becoming a modern artist. Modern art is a very complicated subject, but I don't want you to worry about that. I'm going to make it super easy for you and you'll be an artist like me in no time. Now, you're going to need a few supplies before we begin. An easel, a canvas, a couple brushes, and a full palette. You can get ready to paint with me while I tell you a little bit about today's project. Before the year 1839, the art world was a very different place. Painting, drawing, and sculpture all dealt with issues of representation. One might even say it was boring. Artists and their patrons wanted to create idealized, picturesque images of what they thought art should be. I mean, come on guys, this isn't what we want to make. Photography was developed in the year 1839. You can't even imagine the impact it had on the art world. Before, the reproduction of an image took forever. Now, anyone could have an exact portrait of their loved ones, their home, whatever. This, paired with new printmaking technology, snatched art away from the elite. Now anyone could have any picture they pleased. Now, don't be frightened. Photography didn't make painting obscure, as many art lovers feared. Rightly so. You don't need an artist to get a picture of your mom. You could just use a camera. And you can be damn sure it'll be done in time for a birthday. And no one will make her look sour or fat. It's great. But oh no, what if you're an artist? Now there's a machine that makes paintings better than you do. Well, a handful of artists answered the call. They embraced photography as a means of redeveloping painting. Now, the canvas echoed the camera's viewfinder. Artists could use reference photos, and they didn't have to concern themselves with making exact copies. I mean, think about it. What is painting anyway? It's so gooey and colorful. Why try so hard to make it look like something other than what it is? What if the world were made of paint? Today's old master was one of those revolutionaries. He adopted many photographic techniques into his artwork, and in the process was on the forefront of modernity. His work is considered by many to be some of the first pieces of truly modern art. Today's artist is Edouard Manet. Manet lived and worked in Paris in a time when the elite judged what was or wasn't art. He himself came from a decent upper class family. However, his idea of what art should be was drastically different from what was popular at the time. In order to be a successful artist, one's work had to be judged at the salon. Manet's work wasn't only rejected, it was openly scorned by the public and ridiculed by the press. Today's painting was no exception. It was submitted to the salon in the year 1866, and it was rejected outright. Today's old master painting is... The Viper! I guess the world wasn't ready for this kind of controversy. It's sad and ironic the way this art stuff works. Oh well, are you guys ready to paint? Okay, now, to copy a painting, it's always ideal to be copying from the original. Exactly plausible, you see, the Pfeiffer's in France! So, today, I will be copying from a photographic reproduction. You can get your own. You can find it in any art history textbook or a book on Manet himself, even on the internet. Trust me, it's so easy! Let's begin! go about reproducing an image such as this one. When you're starting out, it's often helpful to use a grid. Or, perhaps you project the image using a light projector. But if you're as talented as me, there's no reason you can't just go ahead and eyeball it. Ta-da! Now your basic image is 
locked in. Remember, we're working in oil paint, so you're going to want to let your layers dry between takes. You can work wet on wet, but you know, that's risky. After blocking, the process of copying becomes a matter of the details. We place layer upon layer, gradually building up to Maggie's vision. just because of his fresh and painterly vision. There was a certain level of scandal behind most of his work. He was interested in representing Parisian life in all of its sordid details. For instance, in the year 1862, Manet submitted The Luncheon on the Grass to the Paris Salon. The year following that, he submitted Olympia. These works are both idolized today, but at the time they were scorned. Now why do you think that is? Well, it turns out it's only okay to make pictures of naked ladies if they represent classical ideals of love and purity. Manet's painting showed a cocky and confrontational woman, not just any woman, Victorine Morant, a well-known Parisian courtesan. Oh yeah, and don't forget, that title, Olympia? Not a classical reference at all! Olympia was a common title for prostitutes at the time! This guy didn't create such a stir. But he was still rejected. It's funny. Once 